from the legendary Versailles restaurant in the Little Havana section of Miami. Welcome to Battleground Florida on Newsmax TV. Good morning, everybody. Alongside my colleague, John Bogman, J.D. Hayworth, welcoming you to this special programming three hours this morning from 8 until 11 Eastern time as we talk about the looming presidential battle in Florida on Tuesday. And John, a lot of things are happening here that we'll chronicle this morning. Critical area, specifically for Marco Rubio. He's got all his chips into the table right now on Florida. It doesn't look good to, for him right now in the polls. We'll see if this community in Miami specifically will rally behind him and make a miracle happen for him. We'll see. Well, it would be the stuff of political legend if Senator Rubio were to rally from the current poll numbers showing that Donald Trump is the clear Republican front, uh, front runner not only across the nation but here in the Sunshine State. We should point out that we will be joined later this morning by Miranda Kahn of Newsmax TV, uh, but obviously a lot to talk about. Now, I also ask your indulgence because one of the challenges of bringing a program like this on the road is trying to make sure that we can communicate with those who are working to bring the program to you. It's one of the ironies where we're talking to people at home right. or in front of their computer terminals, but from time to time the communication it can be a bit muddled from here, for example, to the production truck. So we're going to be working on some of that, but I just wanted to issue that disclaimer and ask your indulgence as the morning continues. In fact, let me make the first inquiry of our Newsmax TV production team. Uh, do we have the ability to have one of our guests join us at this time? Apparently not. Well, I'm getting mixed signals here. Uh, one of the guests join us. I believe we can right now. And the first guest we bring on, John, is the stuff of legend. Let's welcome Felix Rodriguez to our program here this morning. Felix, if we went through your resume, sir, it would be akin to taking all three hours to talk about your exploits uh, as a member of the Cuban community, but as a guts up American going in on behalf of the CIA, volunteering to go in at the height of the Cuban Missile Crisis, willing to do everything to help protect this country and, as you see it, the people of Cuba. Uh, I don't know how much you can talk about that, so I want to stay on safer ground this morning, Felix, and talk politics. As you take a look at the primary on Tuesday, what is your expectation? Well, you know, this has been very uh, atypical uh, situation. Uh, I, we have never seen anything like it, so it's, it's, it could be surprises, definitely. So you're expecting to be surprised? Yes, uh, favorably. Well, now, if we read between the tea leaves, and John Bogman, you may want to yeah. follow up the intrepid political journalist in you. Are you, are you calling for a Rubio upset on Tuesday? I, he, he might surprise people. He have come from behind many times, and uh, he, he might pull a surprise here, too. It's interesting to look at the challenges Mark Rubio faces. His campaign has pulled all their advertising off of the air. They're not doing any advertising specifically in Florida. Uh, they're leaving that up to the Conservative Solutions Pack, which is backing him. Um, they're short on money right now. It would be a miracle for Marco Rubio really to, to win Florida. Uh, a couple of the factors that are going to come into play here is the early voting in Florida. A lot of people voted early uh, going back a week or so ago. Any of this stuff that's happened recently, will that impact that? Not for the folks who voted early. Um, you, you look at Marco Rubio in this community. What is the, the talk on the street about the Rubio campaign? Do, they, do, do the people in this part of Miami, his neighborhood, do they feel like uh, he's let them down in any way, not underperforming in this campaign? No, I don't think so. I, especially in this community, most of them are in favor of him. I already voted, my wife voted, uh, even my granddaughter is the first time she's voting. She just raised her Republican, 18 years old, uh, Rebecca Rodriguez, and she just voted for uh, Marco Rubio. Why did she, why does she think Marco Rubio is the best guy? Well, she, she's been looking at television, of course she also has the influence of the family, you know, what you hear at home, and that's important, but she makes her own mind by what she's looking uh, on television, whatever the candidate is putting out. Uh, Felix, it's interesting in the here and now of American politics to have not one but two Cuban Americans in the running for the Republican nomination. In your wildest dreams, did you expect something like this when you came to the United States? 
Not at that time. <laughs> Definitely. I came many, many years ago. I came to school here back in 1954 when I was about 14 years old. And then, uh, you know, I stayed here all the time. Well, not all the time. When my job with the agency took me away many, many times. But it's a, it's a hell of a situation, really, an interesting situation. I know both candidates. Uh, I met also um, Ted Cruz in New York with a friend of mine. I spent like four hours in a, in a private dinner with him. And uh, he's a very intelligent individual. And uh, it's amazing that we can have two descendants from Cuban origin uh, running for president of the United States and being ahead, actually pretty much ahead within the other people that participated. So uh, we are very proud of that. I'm very proud of this country that gives the opportunity to everybody to be able to have yeah. that opportunity that in other countries you don't have. Uh, we need to touch on some policy in addition to politics. Of course, President Obama decided to normalize relations with Cuba. You have been uh, an unblinking advocate for a free Cuba. You did what you could inside and outside of the agency to restore freedom and democracy to your homeland. When you see this president opening up relations with the Cuban government, still headed by the Castro brothers, what is your reaction? Well, let me tell you, on the 17th of December 2014, I was in El Salvador. And it's just amazing when I heard the news that nobody knew about it, not even Bob Menendez, who was his uh, top guy at the Foreign Relations Committee of the Senate was brief. It was done totally in secret. And uh, well, for a lot of people uh, expected that the president would request a lot of things in return for that top opening. It didn't happen. It, it just surprised the hell out of us. As a matter of fact, what we are looking at is that what he have done is prolonging the agony of the Cuban people at a point that they were really in need of finances because of the situation with Venezuela. First of all, they were receiving over 100,000 barrels of oil a day, of which half of that they sell in the international market. So when the price went down, they lost all of that. And then also the, the oil have been reduced. So they are really, really in, in the need uh, of getting those uh, funds replaced. And what this president is doing, instead of requesting in, uh, real changes in the island, he's just giving them everything for nothing. We have received nothing in exchange. Actually, as a matter of fact, we have seen that since December uh, 17, 2014, the regime have increased the attack on the opposition inside, brutally, against human rights violations. And these people are not doing anything. Felix Rodriguez, we thank you for your time. We want to bring in another guest, and by way of introduction, we go back in time to President Reagan in a State of the Union message. Let's listen and learn from the 1980s before a joint session of Congress. The spirit of enterprise is sparked by the sunrise industries of high tech and by small business people with big ideas. People like Barbara Proctor, who rose from a ghetto to build a multi-million dollar advertising agency in Chicago. Carlos Perez, a Cuban refugee who turned $27 in a dream into a successfully importing business in Coral Gables, Florida. People like these are heroes for the 80s. And Carlos Perez, not only a hero for the 1980s, as President Reagan said in that, in that State of the Union message, but our guest here this morning, Carlos, it is great to have you this morning on Battleground Florida here on Newsmax TV. It is a great pleasure for me to be here and, and really congratulate uh, Newsmax but for bringing this type of program. Well, it is interesting, in your varied career, we heard President Reagan mm -hmm. tell the story of, what, 27 bucks in your pocket and a dream, mm -hmm. but you were telling me before we came on the air here that uh, you served as an ex officio comedy writer for President Reagan. Oh. What, at least uh, you gave him a couple of jokes, correct? Oh, yes, a, a lot of jokes. But besides that, I took something like 20, 20 groups from Cuban Americans and Latin America to the White House during the Reagan presidency. And you were one of the early supporters of Ronald Reagan most and a key definite. supporter. Most definitely, most definitely. Your first meeting with President Reagan, mm -hmm. back I guess when he was Governor Reagan, tell mm -hmm. us about the circumstances of that Not first exactly. encounter. Not exactly, I wrote a letter when he was Governor, but the first meeting that I had was uh, when he named me a uh, to the uh, small business administration. I was the chairman of minorities for three years. And I met him at the White House 
And I always remember, I told him, Mr. President, please don't forget Radio Martí. Mm -hmm. And he told me, I won't forget Radio Martí, Carlos. And I can recall having debates in Congress oh about goodness, keeping yes, Radio Martí alive mm -hmm. and seeing Castro's operatives come from the UN and mm -hmm. sitting in the gallery of the House actually by uh, big guys trying to intimidate members of Congress Most on the different. floor. Most and different. I'll tell you, that just strengthened my resolve to try and keep Radio Marti mm -hmm. in business. Uh, let me ask you, and we may be interrupted by doing sure. some business no here, worries. such as the commerce of television, mm -hmm. but in terms of your career in business, mm -hmm. is there a central lesson you learned that you can pass on to others? Consistency. To define a goal and work hard, and work hard for that goal. Consistency is the name of the game. Consistency is the name of the game. Most and, definite uh, in business. We are going to stay consistent, mindful of business. Sure. We are going to uh, take a break in just a second. Mm -hmm. But again, if you're just joining us, we want to remind you that you are watching Battleground Florida here on Newsmax TV from the legendary Versailles restaurant in Little Havana in Miami, Florida, as we discuss the upcoming presidential primary. John Bachman is here, Miranda Kahn is with us, great guests, and most of all, you too. So stay with us for more of this.